Hi, and welcome to another edition of PRLA Short Takes. I'm John Longstreet, and I'm excited to have with me today the Executive Vice President of Public Affairs for the National Restaurant Association. As you know, the National Restaurant Association is our partner in Washington, and Sean is the top dog as far as all the work with the government that we do there, and we're really excited to be his partner in this, uh, these difficult times. Sean, thanks for taking a minute to be with us today. Great to be with you, John. So there's a couple of things I wanted to talk about briefly if we can. Uh, obviously, a lot of our members uh, have received PPP loans. Some may still receive them. I know there's still some money left in the second tranche. And I know that we're working on trying to make them a little bit more workable for the restaurant industry. Nobody could have foreseen how it was going to end up when this legislation was passed. What's happening in that regard? Well, you're absolutely right. So many restaurants right now have gotten those PPP loans. And as they look at the rules and as they look at the guidance, it, they're really unsure if they can make it work for themselves. The last thing that they want is to run afoul of the rules and then have another loan uh, that they have to pay off over two years. The m number one thing that we're trying to change right now is the notion of the covered period. Right now, the loan has to be, the funds have to be spent within eight weeks, basically, of when the loan originates. That is not going to be enough time for most employers to find real value in bringing their employees back online, opening up their doors. We need a longer period. Either it needs to be extended altogether through the end of the summer, perhaps into the fall. Uh, we're calling for it to be tied to when restaurants are allowed to reopen so that we can get that. Um, we've been pushing Treasury equally hard just to make changes on their own to make the program more palatable or usable for restaurants. A small bit of uh, potential good news Treasury has extended the period for the safe harbor for when you can still return the loan without any penalties. It was supposed to be May 7th. They extended it by a week to May 14th. We've been pressing really hard for them to finally offer some changes on forgiveness. Um, I don't want to um, give anyone any false hope, but we hope that that's why they're extending it, uh, is to give them more time to come up with forgiveness rules that'll make it more usable for restaurants. Uh, that's good news. And the PPP is the Paycheck Protection Program, which was a key part of the uh, so-called COVID-3 or the CARES Act uh, administered by the SBA uh, and your local bank in most cases. So, Sean, thanks for that information on that. In the next package, which we don't know for sure will get passed, but we're referring to as COVID-4 or CARES-2, I know the legislature still has to come back to session to really discuss that. There's an item in there that would be extremely important to our industry. Um, and it's the Restaurant uh, and Food Service Relief and Recovery Fund, I think it's called. Can you tell us a bit about that? And how are you going to be able to differentiate the restaurant industry from all of the other people that are looking for money? It's a great question. About two weeks ago, and we work really closely with you on this, John, uh, we released the survey, uh, the results rather, of a nationwide survey of over 6,500 operators nationwide. Uh, Pennsylvania played a big part of that, and I appreciate all of your members uh, taking time out to fill out that survey. What we wanted to demonstrate to policymakers at the federal and state and local level is that the restaurant industry is uniquely suffering as a result of coronavirus. And the results uh, won't surprise you, but they still, they, they still were shocking. Um, Eight million jobs lost nationwide. Eighty billion dollars in lost revenue between March and April. 240 billion is forecast nationwide by the end of the year. So between, depending on what your state is, 40 to 60% of restaurants right now are closed. Uh, a lot are not gonna be reopening. The restaurant industry has lost more jobs and more revenue than any other industry in the country right now. And we are an industry that's the second largest private sector employer that needs to be a wake up call. Uh, we use the results to do a big press splash in saying we are suffering, we're suffering enough that Congress really needs to step in. There, this is a federal crisis that needs a federal solution. Uh, and we called for three things from Congress. The first is what you noted, the, the restaurant and food service industry recovery fund. Uh, we project, again, $240 billion in lost revenue uh, by the end of this year. Even that is, and that includes as we slowly reopen. We need to make sure that restaurants aren't profiting, but at least that they are made whole and at least that we can survive. So it would be a... We would take your, if, you've dem if you can demonstrate more than 25% lost revenue, you can apply through Treasury and through the IRS to get those funds back on a year-over-year -year basis for the third and fourth quarter, second, third, and fourth quarters. 
Um, second thing we're asking for is changes to PPP, which we've already, we've already discussed. A lot of that money is out the door. It could provide a lot of assistance right now, but it does not take the PPP, the way it's designed, does not take into account the unique business model of restaurants and the unique challenge that we're gonna have in coming back online. Third thing we ask for is tax credits that reflect a lot of capital investments are gonna to have to be made by restaurants to become quote unquote healthy restaurants. Uh, be it purchasing PPE equipment, testing equipment. Uh, if you want to recon, if you have to reconfigure your outdoor space so that you can accommodate more people, uh, these are all capital intensive investments that we are making because the government is going to mandate that we make them. Tax credits to allow us to make those, and they need to be refundable. A lot of restaurants probably are not going to be posting profits this year, so they need to be refundable tax credits. But we need to, if we're going to have these new mandates on us, and if we are cash strapped right now after 52 days of basically being in sleep mode, we're going to need assistance from the federal government. Wow, it sounds like a very comprehensive program of work and hits all the points that restaurants most need. Uh, it is uh, in Pennsylvania, and I know you know these numbers too, there's about 50% of the restaurants are open, but about 81% of the workforce is laid off right now. Wow, uh, yeah. Over 300,000, about 330,000 employees. So it's devastating. And every day you talk, you like me, talk with restaurateurs who are trying to figure out how to get to the other side. It's the work that you're doing, the work that we're trying to do at the state level to help get cash flow into these restaurants to get them to the other side. Thanks for your partnership, John. Well, I appreciate that. On the PRLI side, uh, keep in mind, John, that we used to measure, when we did grassroots appeals, when we would work with you to blanket the hill with phone calls and emails, you and I used to measure success in terms of thousands. So quip, fixing the, fixing the quip fix, we would consider 15,000 pings on Capitol Hill a, a good one. When we put out our first letter to Capitol Hill uh, in the administration, it was on March 18th, three days after uh, restaurants began being shut down. Our goal was ambitious. It was 100,000 engagements on Capitol Hill within five days. Well, working with SRA leaders like you, John, and for you to activate your members the way that you did, we hit 100,000 contacts on Capitol Hill in less than 24 hours. And we are right now at a little less than 500,000 contacts on Capitol Hill right now. Well, and it's, it's, it's admirable, but it's not coming from me. It's coming from the work that you're doing, and it's the work that your members are doing when they recognize this is the biggest existential challenge that we have. We opened up a new website in conjunction with you, restaurantsact.com, uh, and it's really designed for not only the restaurant operator or the employee, but even the person that just considers themselves a foodie, loves the Italian or Mexican place that's in their neighborhood, and they wanna make sure that their voice is heard. The only way that we're gonna make it through this is to be louder than everyone else is. Congress right now is deluged with people. When they start writing bills with a $2 trillion price tag, everybody comes out of the woodwork. John, you and I have talked about this. Uh, you have companies like Adidas coming out saying, because gyms are closed, we need a, a, a sneaker bailout. I, I respect that, we respect that. We are the nation's second largest private sector employer. We're in every community. We're not bipartisan, we're nonpartisan. But if we wanna be louder than the Adidas of the world and the drone manufacturers who say they need a bailout, we need to keep the momentum up. We cannot, I can't thank you and your membership more uh, for everything that you're doing. Well, great word, Sean. And what that means is when you get an action alert from us or from the National Restaurant Association, click on it and respond. It really does make a difference. The numbers make a difference. So, Sean, thanks for again for your partnership, the great work that you've done on behalf of our industry. And I look forward to when we get to the other side of this, and I know that we will together. Thank you. Same, John. Thanks for your leadership. And that's it for another edition of PRLA Short Takes. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next time.